Earth. This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello and welcome to Money Exchange, the program that keeps you up to date with everything you need to know about global currency markets. If there was one word to describe currency markets this month, it would be volatile, as traders start to finally unwind long carry trade positions, sell emerging market currencies and build larger long positions in the US dollar. This, of course, is in anticipation of the US Fed raising rates between now and the end of 2016. So far this month, the Aussie dollar has lost as much as three cents in value against the greenback, and the Kiwi dollar has also fallen by as much as two and a half cents. Joining me shortly is David Green, senior currency dealer at AFEX, and we'll discuss if this month's fall on the Aussie and Kiwi dollars presents a buying opportunity or is it a sign of a big move lower on financial markets? We're always eager to hear on Money Exchange about successful trading and great advice from professional traders. And tonight is no exception. Alex Coslin will join us to run through some fantastic tips on how he prepares for the trading week and what he looks out for before entering a currency trade. Plus, tonight on the show, I'll share with you two things all great currency traders have in common. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at this week's currency headlines. The US dollar fell on Thursday after US retail sales, weekly jobless claims and industrial production numbers for August all missed market estimates, adding to the consensus that the US Fed will sit on its hands this month when it comes to higher interest rates. Futures markets are currently pricing in only a 15% chance the US Fed raises rates in September. The Bank of England raised third quarter growth expectations to 0.3% and said inflation would reach 2% in the first half of 2017 when it released its latest statement on Thursday. Many economists have been expecting the UK economy to weaken since the Brexit vote but recent economic data suggests otherwise. UK retail sales beat market estimates this week, coming in at 5.9% year-on-year for August, which was far better than the market expected, 4.8%. The 21st of September is shaping up to be a huge day for currency markets, as the Bank of Japan and the US Federal Reserve released their latest policy decisions and statements on the same day. Expectations are the Bank of Japan will loosen monetary policy at some point between now and Christmas, whilst the market expects the exact opposite from the US Fed. So Wednesday next week has the potential to substantially lift volatility on global currency markets. Researching the markets on the weekend, some may feel as though it might be an odd thing to do as, let's face it, Price is not moving and markets are closed. But our next guest says the weekends are an ideal time to prepare for the week ahead. Here to teach us some tips on how we can prepare for the trading week is professional trader Alex Coslin. Alex, welcome back to Money Exchange. Thank you, Andrew, for having me. It's great to be back. Well, you do a lot of research on the weekend, apparently, and you're doing well again this year. And I know that uh, currency markets is is your thing, and we've had you on the show, show previously. I wanted to get you back tonight to, to share with the viewers some of the research that you conduct outside of market hours that helps you inside market hours. So tonight we're going to walk through um, what you believe to be the top things that traders can look for over the weekend. So let's start out and share with us how you review things and prepare for the week ahead. I think before we get into that, I think me personally, I look at the market as a living, breathing thing. And normal reaction is that when something moves and is volatile, we become emotional and we react to things. And reacting is already an action that's you're too late yeah. by then. So the key is that you want to put yourself into an environment where you reduce your emotional attachment to, to the market, but, uh, but also where you're not pressured and you can sit back calmly and um, re review the situation. I mean, emotional discipline is just such an important part and it's actually one of the topics I was going to talk about later on in the show. But Yeah, so what, what I like to do is the weekends, markets are closed, 
So you're not under any time pressure. Yep. There's no emotional attachment. You can't react to anything. So one of the first things I like to do on a Saturday morning when markets have closed is I actually like to review the past week. Yep. Both I go through the technical charts, have a look at the movements, but more importantly, I have a look at uh, the various economic data or high-impacting news that has occurred and try to understand what impact that has had on the charts. And, and why price is sitting where it's sitting. Absolutely. So things in the currency market tend to repeat themselves. So if you can learn over time as to why the market reacts to certain information, yep. then that puts you in good stead um, for, for the future. price might go next. Absolutely. Because, I mean, it is true. I mean, financial markets trade based on history. Correct. OK, so there the are... weekend for you is to so review that... what's happened in the so, previous So that's week. the first step. So, and that's part of a learning process. Yep. OK. The, the next thing I review is that if I've had any trades during the week that have closed off, I go back and review those and just, I guess, redouble check to make sure that the process that got me into the trade, yep. that I actually followed it, and you know whether it's a winning or losing trade, I want to know is it because I followed my rules or did I do why a short Why was it a winning trade or why was it a losing Correct. trade? And that's such an important point because so many people take positions in currency markets, they have a winning trade or a losing trade, but they don't know why it actually went up or down. Correct. And, you know, irrespective of how long you've been trading for, sometimes you still make mistakes. Absolutely. You take shortcuts, and uh, and so it's a good way to just to review it and make sure... I mean, you look at any business, they review their performance on a regular basis, so critical things to understand that. OK, so sat, do we do this straight sat after day. the market yeah, closes? Yeah, I have my coffee, and then I sit down and I do that. For how long? Probably half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so it's not a long time no. consuming no. thing. So that's that's a review process. Yep. So what, what about next? So the next thing, obviously, I want to prepare myself um, for the upcoming week. Yep. And I, I look at two things. So I go through, again, the technical charts to see whether there's any potential trade setups. So for me, what I've designed is what I call my trading checklist. Um, yep. So I trade three different systems um, for, for different time frames, depending on how much time availability that I have. Yep. And these checklists list a series of steps. Yep. And until I finish step one, I can't move to step two. Until step two is ticked off, I can't yep. move. To... So what I do is, according to those checklists, I go through the technical charts and I identify through all the pairs which p potential pairs um, are setting up according to that trading system. So out of the 20 odd pairs that I would look, they so might... you want to line up as many things as you possibly can that are going to go in your favour. Correct. And what I might find is that out of that technically, maybe there's only two or three pairs potentially that could be coming up to, you know, ready for a setup on Monday or Tuesday. And so I know that come Monday, under this particular trading system, there's only two pairs that I need to monitor. So I do that through the three various systems. So I have my three checklists. Yep. So I know what I'm looking for. The next thing what I do is I like to review the upcoming economic calendar to understand in the coming week... What's coming fundamentally. What, absolutely. Yep. Because that could potentially affect... Not potentially, it will affect my, my trade position. So that's the... Um, the, 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 the process, prep work. The, the prep work. And what about during the week? So during the week, obviously, when the markets are open, I've got my checklists. Yep. And I'm focusing purely on those selected pairs under each trading system and, and the monitoring to make sure that as they move from step one to step two to step three to yep. step four, and eventually, um, again, not all pairs, some will fizzle out. And some will trigger a, a position. Some will trigger a position. So that's how How many positions on average per week that you may get triggered into? It varies. I would say under each system, uh, that could vary between one to two maybe three positions under each system. Per week? Per week. OK, so... But then there are certain weeks, sorry, there are certain weeks... Busier we, than others. Correct. So some of the, one of the systems is more of a, a, of a daily trend. Yep. So obviously those trades come up less often. Yep. Some are off um, in a one hour and 15 minute chart, so obviously they're... Risk versus more. reward. What are you looking to risk? What's your average reward? Um, minimum, again, depends on the trading system. So one of the trading systems I look for two to one. Others, um, the more frequent ones, are a one-for-one one minimum. So if there's less for one-for-one, one, I don't take them. Yep. But then I would adjust the, um, the profit target higher, never yep. lower, um, based on where the next resistance So generally was. speaking, you're always looking to make more than what you're risking. Absolutely. You have to. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Tell us a little bit about 
the private coaching that you do? Because I know that there's a lot of budding traders watching this program that, you know, would would give you virtually anything to be trained by someone who's gone through it and made it and is now a professional trader. Tell us a little bit about what you do with traders. This is something I started um, in July. I was fortunate enough that through my training process, I had access to some of the best mentors uh, in the business, and I was fortunate to be able to get one-on-one -on -one co coaching. So from July onwards, I started offering a service um, to do private coaching, and there's really, I guess, two forms of private coaching. There are some students or retail traders that uh, have a specific issue or a specific uh, topic that they want to cover, yep. and we cover those. Um, but there are others also who actually want to learn my trading systems, the way advanced I trade. trading strategies. Correct. Yep. And so they were not necessarily advanced at, um, from the beginning as beginners, but we go through a program. Yep. And, um, you know, I guess, not I guess, one of my most recent uh, clients, um, last two months has been averaging 9 and 10% per uh, wow. return Fantastic. per month on 1% risk. Okay, so if you want to get more information about how you can be coached by Alex, all you need to do is send an email to support at ltgoldrock.com and they'll put you in touch with Alex. Alex, thanks so much for coming in and joining us again on Money Exchange. We'll Pleasure, Andrew. back in the next few weeks. Thank you very much. Don't go away, because after the break, we'll find out if the recent slide on the Aussie dollar is a sign of things to come. Masters is closing down. Discounts across every item in store. Savings on major household brands. Everything is on sale. All stock must go. Don't miss out. Get in fast. Masters is closing down. Terms and conditions apply. Ask in store for details. The Audi A3 Runout is now on. Purchase the Audi A3 sedan with style and technic packages from only $45,000 drive away. The Audi A3 Runout. Timing is everything. Nighttime is my time with Olay Regenerist Overnight Miracle. From first drop, it helps renew your skin. And used with Olay's most advanced cream, it boosts skin renewal in just five nights. For firmer skin with visibly reduced wrinkles, search Olay Overnight Miracle. Starting a business isn't easy, but with determination and a domain, website and round-the-clock support from GoDaddy, people everywhere have built their businesses. Think you can turn your idea into a success? We know you can. Go you, GoDaddy. Sally must have had fun in her Cherokee on the weekend. It's got this 3.2 litre V6 engine so you can really get out there. She was in the woods. Yeah. Whoa. She came across a, a bear. A bear? This five inch touchscreen control. Don't tell me she poked it. No. She, she poked a bear! And all that for the price I paid. That's why I bought a Jeep. Sally's wild. That is why she bought a Jeep. The Jeep Cherokee Longitude from 38k drive away. Now with three leather accented trim. Jeep, don't hold back. Nighttime is my time with Olay Regenerist Overnight Miracle. From first drop, it helps renew your skin. And used with Olay's most advanced cream, it boosts skin renewal in just five nights. For firmer skin with visibly reduced wrinkles, search Olay Overnight Miracle. Welcome back to Money Exchange. The Aussie dollar has fallen by as much as three cents this month and emerging market currencies have also taken a hit. Is this a sign of things to come for the local currency? Joining us from our Sydney City studio is senior currency dealer at Apex, David Green. Dave, welcome back to Money Exchange. G'day, mate. How are you? Very well. Good. Mate, the, the Aussie dollar, it traded down to a low of 74.41, down three cents mm. this month so far. Yep. Is this a sign of things to come heading into the back half of last year? We've seen a lot of money coming for the US dollar on given days in the last week and in, in real increase in volatility. Mm. What are your thoughts about, has the trend changed, is the psychological shift there now on the Aussie dollar to move back lower between now and Christmas? Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I would give it a, a pretty strong chance to, to break the current trend. I mean, it was range trading there for sort of the, uh, it was 75 up to 77 for what seemed like an eternity, <laughs> to, to be honest. But um, in terms of then, you know, uh, I think 
uh, how the market is viewing things at, at the moment. Really, the catalyst for the uh, for, for the drop the other day was around concerns from a commodity the, the commodity side of things, rather than purely focused uh, on, a, on a monetary policy stance. And particularly, everyone's eyeing the uh, the, the Federal Reserve uh, next week. So um, their their decision now in terms of expectations around normalisation for for policy. Um, for, from the US Fed, those have probably pared back somewhat for, for next Thursday. But certainly, I think markets are probably uh, probably hopeful of, of uh, a rate increase by the end of the year, by their December meeting. So, you know, I, I think it's, so there's a combination of. Okay, well, you know, we've got a, we've got the U.S. on one hand, and that's really sort of the major risk event. But on the other side of the coin is, you know, what's happening to uh, to, to global growth, uh, and you know, if from a commodity space, uh, is there going to be a cap on production from OPEC? Potentially, that that might be the case, and and we'll go from there. So it was probably a couple of different diff different things that, that really churned the Aussie. This week, and I think you know we've found some good support. We're still back around that 75 cent mark now. Uh, where the trend is going to take us, potentially we could see it break out of this trend again and eye off a 74 cent mark, and then that would position us from a technical perspective marginally lower. So what about, uh, we, we've been talking a lot on the program in the last few weeks about the US Fed, and to be honest, it's a bit getting a little bit old, but yeah. what about the RBA here in Australia? We've got a new governor coming in. What is the chances of seeing another rate cut between now and Christmas? Because I assume that if the Fed raises rates, and let's assume they're probably going to raise them in December if they yeah. do, what's the chances of us getting another rate cut here in Australia? And if that does happen back down to 70 cents or below. Yeah, look, I, I think, uh, look, between now and Christmas, I think markets are pricing in about a third uh, the, the likelihood uh, uh, we'll, that we'll see a, a, another cut by the RBA. That would take us from 1.5% down to 1.25. Look, does the, the economy warrant it, does the economy warrant a, a further interest rate cut? I think it's probably, uh, I think it, it's, it's hard to say. I, I, I Personally, I, I don't think we do. We've got pretty robust um, growth that we saw. We saw GDP out um, a couple of weeks ago. We had unemployment out uh, yesterday, which was, you know, it's still, um, uh, uh, I think uh, surprisingly low at 5.6 per cent, despite the, the net change being uh, around so that negative 4,000 uh, jobs lost for, for the month. But uh, I think we're also in an environment where we are going to have persistently low and stubbornly low inflation. And that's due to a, a myriad of things. Um, we're not seeing as much imported inflation. We've certainly got commodities which are under a, a little bit of pressure. So in terms of that, I think sort of uh, uh, the impetus for the RBA to pull the trigger on you know, further easing probably isn't there at, at, at this stage. I think they would prefer to wait and see um, how, uh, certainly how the Fed plays out uh, and then pushing into, uh, into next year. So, you know, they, they, they pulled the trigger in May uh, this year and then uh, the, the other months more recently. So I think in terms of that, I think there's still a lot of time uh, to, I think the market, or sorry, the RBA will need to digest and will be happy to digest a lot of risk events before looking to, to engender further interest rate cuts. It's really interesting because I think you talk to the people on the street and ask them whether or not they're actually out buying and borrowing and hiring mm. with lower interest rates. And would you do it if they put rates down further? I think the consensus is most people think, no, they, they wouldn't. So I mm. think you're right. The RBA would probably prefer to sit on the sidelines. Yeah. Let's talk about the pound against the Aussie for a moment. I think yeah. m most traders and economists were expecting post the Brexit vote that we'd see a rally on the Aussie dollar against the pound. But uh, of late, we've seen some really good economic signs out of yeah. the UK. We had a good industrial production number overnight, good mm -hmm. retail sales. The Bank of England have even come out and lifted their economic forecasts. But for the time being, it looks as though the, the trend on the pound against the Aussie is, is back higher again. Yeah, it does. I think it's. Um, I mean, it's certainly. You know, you, you would you would expect that. I think the market's probably. You know, they're they're dealing with a conundrum because uh, as yet, you know, the uh, the UK 
doesn't, or the perception is they're no closer to leaving, you know, the uh, the, the eurozone. We still need the, uh, the the Lisbon Treaty to be enacted. So you know, there's those sort of uh, there's those sort of overarching um, conundrums or uncertainties that are still at play. And so whilst that's still in the in the, the never never, you know, the market really only has the only has a, a, the the choice to to focus on the fundamental data, to focus on you know what we know. And what we do know is yeah that the UK economy is surprisingly, uh, I suppose, acting fairly or in a fairly robust fashion. So, uh, I mean, we, we would still anticipate there to be uh, a further easing by, by the BOE. Potentially, that's you know maybe before Christmas to uh, to try and sort of beat off any um, uh, adverse impacts uh, of an economic slowdown or potentially you know stagnant growth over a period of time. So, they, but they certainly have uh, you know uh, I think enough. Uh, enough sort of firepower uh, to, to combat that that sort of thing, but yeah, I think sort of in the I think yeah the the, the UK economy is doing pretty well, and only naturally uh, that would see some uh, some flow of funds heading back their way. Big week next week, Bank of Japan and the US Fed on the same day. Mm. What are you expecting? Yeah, look, I think uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a cracker actually. So look, in, in terms of whether or not you know, the the elephant in the room that we've all been talking about is is the US Fed. Uh, I, look, I don't think that they'll look to, uh, to look to move. Certainly, they um, they've been very good at being uh, managing market expectations over the the past couple of years. It's been a certain a very strong feature of uh, uh, Chairwoman Yellen's uh, leadership. Uh, so in terms of that, you know, if you look at any, or if you look at past moves by the uh, by the Fed, really the market has uh, been pricing in more than a an, uh, around an eighty percent probability that something's going to happen, and, and then it does. So I think in terms of the way that they're managing the market's uh, perception uh, of what the what their move will be, they've been doing that. They've been fairly consistent in terms of their rhetoric. There was a little bit of a bump at. Uh, a, Jackson Hole, you know, with Yellen, uh, and I think uh, might have been Fisher as well, uh, reiterating comments that uh, you know they were, the rhetoric that they were talking about was definitely indicative of, of interest rate hikes. But I think uh, we had uh, um, a member, voting member Brainard on Monday night, who was more more on that dovish side. And I think probably at the moment that the doves will will win the argument. I think the Fed. Yellen has been very adamant around uh, any decision being data dependent. And the data is, it's good, but it's probably not where the Fed would like it to be in order to support uh, an interest rate hike just as yet. I think they'll probably wait till December uh, to, to see where we go. So I think it's going to be a, a, a non-event on, um, uh, on, on Thursday. The BOJ will be pretty interesting as well. Certainly I wouldn't be surprised uh, for further signs of um, I suppose additional help from the from the fiscal side of things. I think that's something they've been very vocal about. So, but you know, it's definitely they they're in a uh, quite the quandary in terms of what they do to try and stimulate their economy, which has really been on the on the backwater for for some time. So, and we also well, have the RBNZ next isn't week it? as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So RBNZ. It's going to be look, a big week. What what are they going to do? Mate, thanks very much for your time. Always appreciate it. Good on you. Cheers. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, David. That was David Green, senior currency dealer at Apex. Well, I promised you at the start of the show I would share with you two things all great currency traders have in common. So, here goes. Grab a pen and paper. Learning the skill of emotional discipline is the greatest profit-making skill traders had. To develop emotional discipline that all great traders have takes time and it takes a lot of patience, but it can be done. And most budding traders, in my experience, trade too much. And what happens is it results in this duck hunter approach rather than the sniper approach. The result is they trade emotionally instead of logically. And over many years, I've seen traders substantially improve their trading results by simply trading less. It will greatly assist controlling your emotional discipline if you trade a little less, as Alex said. Focus. You will likely improve your probability of trading success by focusing on one market and becoming a specialist in that market. So emotional discipline and focus. This will allow you to become the detective that you need to be and it'll allow you to likely find the value in the market before everyone else has figured out what you're considering buying is a good idea. So consider focusing on one market 
become your own master of that market and you will likely improve the chances of your success. So the two things, emotional discipline and focus. If you'd like to learn more about the currency markets, you can join me every Wednesday evening live online for my free weekly currency coaching sessions. All you need to do is go to trainwithandrew.com and register. That's trainwithandrew.com and register. And you can join me live online every Wednesday night. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. That's all we've got time for. Have a great weekend and we trust we'll see you back here again next week. Bye-bye.